As we meet in this historic room, and if you have a moment, take a look at the uh, uh, history of this room that's printed on the back wall here, a room where they had the hearing on the sinking of the Titanic, a room which has had the Watergate hearings, Iran-Contra, and in addition, two men announced their candidacy for presidency in this room, John Kennedy and Robert Kennedy. And I think back to uh, the first person that I um, worked for in public life uh, who had ran for president as well, and that was Paul Simon. He ran in 1988, and this was the year, of course, with Ronald Reagan's presidency, and one observer in Washington wrote that Paul Simon had written more books than some presidential candidates had read. Uh, Paul was an amazing man, did not have a college degree, dropped out of college to become a newspaper publisher, and published more than 25 books. None of them were big bestsellers making a lot of money, but each of them in its own way had an insight into the human condition or history that was unique. And it was about 30 years ago that Paul wrote a book entitled Tapped Out. It was not a big seller. I have a copy, there's still a few around. And he identified 30 years ago the challenge of water in the world. Uh, and it opened my eyes to this issue. And as the administrator has said, his uh, widow Patty has kept that uh, dream alive, that memory alive, and I've tried to do the same. I was lucky uh, to have two staff people who've been extraordinary in assisting me, Chris Holman and Aram Ibrahim, who have helped me put together some legislative approaches to this. It started in 2005, and it was the Paul Simon Water for the Poor Act. I picked that not only because it was his cause, but because I knew the man well enough to know he would never want a statue erected in his name, nor a highway or building named after him. But to name a program after him that is helping poor people around the world, he would consider a fitting tribute. So did I. And that program got started and grew into a much larger undertaking, thanks to the commitment of this president and this administration. What has it done? Well, I happened to be in Port-au-Prince a few years ago, and I went to an NGO named Jeskio. Jeskio is in Port-au-Prince. Those of you who've been there know that it's one of the poorest places on earth. The woman who's taking us around on the tour couldn't wait to show us her new well. Right there, smack dab in the middle of Port-au-Prince, was a well which to all appearances was very simple. But she said, thanks to the Paul Simon program, we have this well. I said, what did this well cost? She said, $25,000. And how many people are served by this well? 100,000 people served by the water from this well, clean water, in a part of the world where waterborne disease, sadly, is a, an ongoing challenge. It was not only honoring the member, memory of Paul Simon that led me to do this, but my basic belief that this is so fundamental when it comes to the challenges of the world. Thomas Friedman reminded us on Sunday in the New York Times how the political turmoil in Syria had some of its roots in a fight for water. The battle over the Middle East and its future is hinging on water. The future of young women around the world depends on water. The survival of babies and other people all over the world depends on water. I said to Secretary Clinton and to Secretary Kerry, and I don't need to tell Administrator Shah, the United States can define itself, its values, and its role in the world by standing up for things that are so basic and so fundamental they are apolitical, and water is one of those things. If the United States were identified around the world as the leader in bringing clean drinking water to the poorest people in the world, it would be the biggest breakthrough in terms of the American image to people who may not even know who we are. And we have done this. Thank you. I'm lucky, I'm lucky to have some great allies. Earl Blumenauer said uh, we seem to pop up in many of the same places when it comes to these issues. And Earl, thank you. As a congressman from Portland, Oregon, he's been a real leader on many, many issues. And thank you for joining us on this. We appreciate it so much. He deserves a round of applause. I also want to acknowledge several of my colleagues who are not here at this moment, but have been with me. Chris Coons, an extraordinary new senator. And, oh, Chris has just arrived. Hi, Chris. Didn't see you sneak in here. 
but as chairman of the Africa Subcommittee and a true globalist when it comes to these issues, couldn't have a better friend and ally. And he would say, as I will say, Johnny Isaacson, Republican of Georgia, has been with us, now no longer on the committee, but certainly with us on many of these great issues, and Bob Corker, who was my co-sponsor of this legislation, making it uh, a bipartisan effort. Let me just close, because there's some, so many good speakers that you'll be hearing this morning, to say thank you to each and every one of you who in some way, large or small, made this a reality. It's not often those of us who are in public service and public life can really point to real changes that make a difference. I saw it in Port-au-Prince in Haiti, and I think we can all see it all around the world. This is a cause worth fighting for. And I wanted to quote um, a little closing here that I think uh, was aptly written uh, by my speechwriter who put this together for us. She said, the way to douse the, fl douse the flames of global poverty and disease and conflict is not with fire, but with water. Thank you.